Okay. Now it took me a while to get to this. I'm in the manual mode, so I'm on here. Got the compensation. Uh, exposure compensation turned down to minus two. Active delighting on off. Uh, daylight and the light settings to minus three. Um, and then I have my ISO set to um, 125, I believe. Well, at least I think I did. I might have to double check that. Well, let's zoom in here on Venus and see what we got with this right now. That's a full zoom. Again, it looks pretty cool. to check my ISO again. So let me back out. Hey, um, my ISO is set down to 100. Um, I did put my active D lighting on high though. out here earlier seemed to disappear Before I go to the movie mode, I'm going to take some um, quick snapshots of this too. So, just want to do it at different speeds. Okay, I'll do it at take pictures at different speeds. I mean, different exposure times. Um, time now and I got to do this fairly quickly because it's going to duck behind some trees I just want to kind of say that I see a lot of star videos out and you know what people say that you know these stars are all uh, you know vibrations and light and you know like you know water in a pond and <clears throat> I'm, you know, basically saying that you're overexposing the light source, which the, the star is the light source. So when you overexpose it, um, you're going to get some crazy, crazy appearances of the stars. You got to be able to cut your light um, and set your camera to the right settings uh, without overexposing it. And these were just a bunch of uh, pictures that I took that weren't overexposed. And you can actually see the crescent shape that Venus does make um, when it's not overexposed and it looks pretty cool um, you know especially when it's even got more of a crescent which I do have uh, other footage and I've posted a few other videos on Venus where it's a half crescent um, <clears throat> but then too I, what I wanted to do was I wanted to take some pictures of it being overexposed and show you the difference and some time lapses too um, as you notice, it's uh, 2,100 hours, so, you know, you're, I'm not a real late at night, but still pretty late, um, 
uh, the, these are definitely overexposed. Same zoom, everything, just different uh, exposure time. Um, I gave it more exposure time, uh, which gave it this, um, you know, these rays of light that, you know, look like a flower, actually, um, which is pretty cool, too. Um, you know, so I, I say that, yeah, it looks mysterious when it's out of focus, but when you get it in focus, it, it actually gives you more of a definition of what the actual star looks like, um, you know, from our point of view. Um, I did do some time lapses too, and with the time lapses, they are overexposed, um, so you'll get this bright, shiny light. Um, but I like to do time uh, time lapses. Um, as you see how the how the ring goes around the star is much bigger. Um, or the lighting, I should say, and this one I zoom back a little bit more to get it in here longer was able to do a little longer exposure and then I zoomed back even more to give it even a longer exposure um, <clears throat> or maybe I even cut the I might have cut the light back on this and that was just a a Kim trail that went by uh, that blocked out blocked it out for a second there um, and you can see it's getting lower and lower on the horizon and this one I did definitely zoom back more um, give you a little less of a ring on it um, and I did cut the exposure back a little bit more too but you know time lapses are different than pictures all right appreciate it thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it